My fuel gauge stopped working on my John Deere lawn tractor and after getting tired of running out of gas constantly, I decided to fix it. I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to fix this problem yourself. And while parts of the video might look difficult, anyone can do this repair and I'm going to show you how step by step. Every single tool and product used in this video is linked in the video description if you need to go back there for more information. I promise you already own almost all the tools you need to fix this problem yourself. First, I lifted the tractor, removed the wheels, and put it on jack stand. This provides a little bit of extra access and working room, and while you don't necessarily have to do this, I happen to be making a video of showing people how to do this, so some of that camera angles can get pretty tight, so I just pulled the wheels off to make it easier for myself. Now, the seat is held on with four bolts, and this, again, is something that you don't have to do, but I wanted to do it because the plug under the seat, I didn't want to have any complications with that and trying to lift the rear body work off and having it snag on the plug. Now there's two bolts underneath the seat and they go directly to the frame braces. Go ahead and pull those out right now. Now in the wheel well, there's some bolts and brackets that I chose to remove. Some of them you can get by with just loosening them. I went ahead and removed everything. Again, I like doing things the easy way. At this point, the entire rear body work can be lifted off of the mower. Now keep in mind that the gas cap needs to be removed to allow the bodywork to slide around the fuel neck. And don't forget about that pesky wiring for the seat switch. That has to be pushed through and just make sure that you don't snag it pulling the bodywork off. I had a lot of leaves, dirt, and debris under that bodywork resting right in that area where I needed to work. And my obsessiveness with cleaning and my desire for not getting dirt and debris into the open fuel system, I just had to clean it up before I move forward. I started by vacuuming the big stuff and then I degreased the area and let it soak for a little bit. I rinsed that off and then I degreased again. Let that sit, scrub that with a brush, and then rinse that freely. And then dried with a leaf blower. Now that I can eat off the area, I can go ahead and continue with my my project and that's the fuel sending unit right there now some people call it a sending unit some people call it a level sensor either way it's a float based sensor that sends the reading up to the gauge that then displays what the fuel level is now to check and make sure that's the fuel sending unit that's the problem before you go any deeper into this project all you have to do is unplug it and put a jumper wire across that plug you can use a coat hanger a paper clip extra piece of wire whatever you have available with the plug jump turn the key to the on position but you don't have to start the tractor. You can see that I'm now getting a reading on my fuel gauge, which was otherwise dead before doing this. And by disconnecting the jumper wire, you see that needle starts to fall back down. This little test tells me that the sending unit is definitely the problem, and I'm on the right track. If you're still not getting a reading with the sending unit jumped, then you have a different problem, and it probably has something to do with the gauge itself. Now, removing the screws for the sending unit requires an Allen key. Or if you're like me, you use a Torx T25 because that's what you have handy. It's not the wrong tool, it's an alternative tool. Now, as you're pulling the sending unit out, be careful. It's going to have gas in it. So let it kind of drain for a second. Don't just go yank it out all willy-nilly and spill gas everywhere. Just Now, using a teeny tiny Phillips head screwdriver, I unscrewed the bottom to get the float out. I had read on the internet, which is always accurate, that sometimes that float can fill with gas and start to sink and rather than float and give you an accurate reading it just sinks to the bottom and gives you a false negative reading or a false empty reading. I wanted to test that theory out so I took the float out and dropped it in a bucket of water to see if it floated. It, it did. My problem is still a bad sending unit. Now when you go to the John Deere dealer to replace your part, I highly recommend bringing the part itself with you and having the serial number to your tractor with you at the ready in case they need it. Now my tractor is an X540 and I guess there was a design switch somewhere halfway through the production cycle. So some of the X540s have one sending unit and some of them have the other. And of course, they ordered the wrong one right out of the gates. And now eventually I got the right one, but it was frustrating because every time they had to order the sending unit in, and the only time I could get there was on the weekends on Saturday. So it was actually four consecutive weekends of going there, requesting the part, getting the wrong part, going back, reordering, getting the right thing. It was a giant waste of time. And what I should have done was bring the part with me and say, here, I need this, make this happen. And when you go and pick up your part, if you do have to order it in, bring the old part with you and open it right there at the desk. Mirror match the things together, hold them up side by side and say, yep, I have a match or uh, nope, these are way different. It might save you a little trip. Oh, and uh, this part is crazy expensive too. It's like $150. So 
had I known that going in, I might not have even done this project to begin with, but uh, the video would kind of be lame if I just stopped it right here and was like, yeah, it was too expensive, so I didn't buy it, so I just put the broken one back in and kept mowing my lawn. I had to pay the John Deere tax on this one, but I wanted it done and I was halfway through already, so whatever. Now the new part slides right in, and don't forget that gasket. A little anti-seize on the screws and me and my T25 Torx driver had those Allen screws installed in no time. I plugged it in and rerouted the wiring into the correct location that it came from. Now there's a little foam block that acts as a holder for the wiring harness and that had come unglued. So I busted out the 3M Super 77 spray adhesive. Gave it a quick shake, sprayed the glue on, let the glue set up, then stuck it down into place, good to go. It's worth noting that I did check the function of the part at this point and was pleased to see that everything was working perfect. Now on to reassembly and putting this mess back together. And I've got a pro tip for you. As you take things apart, bag your hardware in the little Ziploc bags and write on the bag what that component is for. In addition to the component description, put a little number next to it. The first component you take off would be labeled one. And the next component that you take apart, well, the fasteners in that bag will be labeled two, and so on and so forth. Now, when it comes to putting things back together, simply lay all your bags out in numerical order. You start with the biggest number first, because that was the last thing you took off, and then you just work your way backwards all the way through. So not only does the bag system help you keep track of what hardware goes for which component, it also shows you the order in which things were taken apart. So you can do the reverse of that without even thinking about it. Disassembling and reassembling things like this eliminates all those extra bolts that you have left over on most projects. Everything goes back to where it came from. It's very easy and it's very simple. It's an easy system, it's fairly simple, and I use it all the time and it works great. One of the best things about owning a lawn tractor is all the attachments that are available for it. I have a playlist of a handful of my favorite attachments for my lawn tractor. Now you can click into that playlist right here, I guarantee you're gonna enjoy it. If you like this video, and I hope you did, think about subscribing to the channel. I make content like this all the time. Hopefully this video helped you out, and I'll see you on the next one.